Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Setting the Trend Straight. My name is Brittany, and I'm one of your Stop and Shop Nutrition Partners Registered Dietitians. Today's theme is all about alternative sweeteners. As always, just a quick disclosure that the information presented today is for educational purposes only and is not to replace the advice of your own medical care providers. And in case you are new to our series or new to our team as a whole, I just wanna highlight what our dietitians have to offer. We provide free nutrition education to help you reach your own health goals through our online classes. We're also available for one-on-one -on -one consultations in the states that we serve. And if you head to our website, stopandshop.com slash nutrition, you can find a variety of resources, including downloadable templates to make your grocery shopping and meal planning easier and information on a variety of different health topics. And my last little bit of housekeeping here, while your cameras are off and you are muted, please feel free to put any questions you may have in the chat box or Q&A boxes found at the bottom of your screen. I'll try to keep my eye out throughout in case anything needs to be clarified and otherwise be sure that we leave time for answering any questions you may have at the end. Like many foods and ingredients that end up in the headlines, there's a lot of confusion around alternative sweeteners and what they even are to begin with. So today we will take a close up on the different types of sugar substitutes, where you might find them and discuss their role in health. You're likely aware that it is recommended to limit the amount of added sugar we get each day. The American Heart Association recommends limiting uh, men to limit their added sugars to nine teaspoons per day and men, women to six. Added sugars don't provide us with any additional nutrients, so they're often referred to as empty calories. Sugar also has a direct impact on our blood glucose levels. So for individuals who are managing prediabetes or diabetes and keeping a close eye on blood glucose levels, paying attention to the sources of sugar is of particular importance. Now, when limiting added sugars, regardless of reason, individuals might seek out sugar substitutes, which includes our artificial or non-nutritive sweeteners, along with sugar alcohols. Now, one of the first questions that often comes to mind around these sugar alternatives is their safety. And I wanna highlight here that the FDA is required by law to review new food additives for safety before they can even go to the market. On the screen here, you see a list of FDA approved artificial sweeteners that have been designated as being safe to be added to food products. In addition to approving these uh, sugar alternatives as being safe to consume, the FDA also determines what's called an acceptable daily intake related to safety. So these are amounts that are you know, how much you could consume where before it might raise any questions. And these amounts are significantly higher than what most people would consume, especially since, as we'll talk about today, these sugar substitutes are much sweeter than sugar. So often less is needed to be used for sweetening things such as your coffee. Now you might not recognize these substitutes immediately with the names as they are listed here, but if you did flip over the food products you might be picking up and look at the ingredients list, these are some of the common terms you may see. So next I'll go ahead and highlight the brand names that we're likely more familiar with and then take a close up on some of the different types of products that they tend to pop up in next. Sweet and Low, Equal and Splenda are likely the more familiar names of some of these approved sugar substitutes that you saw on the previous screen as saccharin, aspartame and sucralose. These are high intensity sweeteners that are commonly used as sugar substitutes because they're many times sweeter than sugar, but they contribute only a few to no calories when they're added to foods. So high intensity, again, meaning that they're much more sweet than sugar. Equal is about 200 times sweeter and Splenda is up to 600 times sweeter. When it comes to these artificial sweeteners, our bodies do not break down these products in the same way as we do sugar. So they do not influence our blood glucose levels in the same way. And just a few interesting facts, uh, saccharin, so what we see here and know better as sweet and low, was actually the first commercialized artificial sweetener and it became popular during World War I due to sugar shortages. 
So that's just a little bit of fun fact. And I think it also serves as a good reminder that these products have been around longer than they may seem, especially now that we see so many new products popping up with the, the use of these artificial sweeteners, such as those that have been marketed with the rise of the keto diet. Now, while they have been around for a while, most of these were used in limited ways in the food system until about the 1980s. Splenda, this one is actually one of the most widely used calorie-free sugar substitutes. It's also heat stable, which is pretty unique because it may be a better choice when you're cooking and baking with a substitute. Not all of these substitutes are a direct or good replacement for sugar when it comes to cooking and baking. Um, if you think back to science classes that you may have, sugar does play an important role in making some of the properties that we're looking for when we're doing our cooking and baking to make them, again, not only taste sweet, but to look and cook appropriately for their texture. So when you are cooking or baking with these substitutes, it's recommended to check each manufacturer's websites to get tips for the best use. And lastly, a note on equal. Aspartame is made of amino acids, phenylalanine, and aspartic acid. Individuals who have a rare genetic disorder called PKU cannot metabolize phenylalanine, and they need to avoid the substitutes. So you may have seen little warnings on the equal packets or products that use it. Um, about that. So just a quick little clarification in case you've seen that before and might be wondering what that means. Now, another type of sugar substitute are sugar alcohols. These have about half the calories of regular sugar, and they're not as dramatically sweet as those that we just discussed. These compounds add sweetness to food without having that same effect on blood sugars as real sugar. They do still impact blood sugar slightly, but in a much less dramatic way. These substitutes are relatively easy to identify in the food labels as they often end in OL. As you see maltitol circled here, things like sorbitol, mannitol, and xylitol are a few other examples. Now, when it comes to these sugar alcohols, they can cause things like bloating, gas, and just general GI discomfort, especially if they are consumed in excessive amounts. So that's just something to be aware of, especially if you're just starting to have some of these products with sugar alcohol in it and notice any of these side effects, you might wanna cut back on just how much you're having per day. I also wanna take a note to call out here that while you may think, see things like sugar-free on the front of the package, this certainly doesn't mean that they are calorie-free and also does not mean that they're carbohydrate-free. As in this example shown here with these candies containing sugar alcohols, and then they also have some other ingredients that contribute carbohydrates. Again, this is of particular importance for in individuals who may, may be managing diabetes, uh, people who follow the keto diet and are trying to limit the amount of carbohydrates that they have each day. So you'll see these sugar alcohols pop up in many diet related products like as hard candies, they're in chewing gum, chocolates, uh, sugar-free jams and spreads, puddings, things like that. So it's something just to keep an eye on and check the ingredients list and that nutri nutrition facts label. There has also been recent increase in interest and use of sugar alcohols and one in particular called erythritol, which we'll take a close up on next. There we go. A recent study that was published this past February out of the Cleveland Clinic found that erythritol to be associated with an increased risk for cardiovascular events, heart attack, and stroke. So you may have seen some of these headlines or heard some buzz about it on the news late this winter, early this spring. Now, this product is used in many sugar-free products and in sweetener alternatives such as Swerve. It really quickly made a splash in the headlines when that report came out. And I just wanna clarify a few key points. Um, one is that erythritol is not a new sweetener and many countries have approved of its use. The World Health Organization has confirmed its safety. It is still unclear whether high consumption of erythritol over time is safe or not. The study that again made the headlines found an association between high blood levels erythritol. So that's not the amount of the sweetener that was in foods or how much these study participants ate. So it's between the blood levels and incidence of cardiovascular events. This does not mean that it showed any cause and effect. 
And while the study could not draw that definitive conclusion, it does highlight the need for more research to be done to understand its effects on cardiovascular and really overall health. Now, if you're concerned, there are other sugar alternatives like they've we discussed so far today and a few more to highlight or other ways to cut back on added sugar. It's always important to weigh you know, the potential risks and benefits of any alternative sweetener as you make your individual choices. So next up are our natural, our natural alternatives, that's a little hard to say, are sometimes called our plant-derived non-caloric sweeteners. These ones are newer to the scene in terms of sugar substitutes. And these include stevia and monk fruit extracts, as you may have heard of them before. These products are typically less processed and they are more similar to their natural sources compared to the other artificial sweeteners we've discussed. Uh, like those we have reviewed already, these alternatives are also not a significant source of calories and they do not have the same effect on blood glucose levels as regular sugar. When it comes to stevia, so the stevia plant is actually an herbal shrub that's native to South America. It's been used for food and medicinal purposes for hundreds of years. Uh, it is the leaves of this shrub that provide the sweet components for that sugar substitute. So the sweeteners are extracted from the leaves and then used in things like sweetener packets and in reduced calorie products. Stevia may often be combined with other sugar alternatives such as erythritol that we just discussed in products such as Truvia. This really helps reduce the intensity of the sweetness of stevia. It's about 200 to 350 times sweeter than sugar. So again, only a small amount is typically needed. Monk fruit sweetener is about 100 to 250 times sweeter than sugar, and it's newer to the market, having been approved for use in 2010. This extract comes from a fruit grown in Southeast Asia, and just like stevia, it may be paired with other products to cut back on that sweetness. There is a, some research being done on monk fruit to take a closer look at its potential antioxidant properties, but we're not quite there yet to report any be benefits on this sweetener. And here I just had a moment to highlight what you might see when you're checking the ingredients list and how some of these sweeteners might be combined. So you could see both of these sweeteners as individual tabletop packets or in products combined just to help balance out the sweetness. A newer sweetener that you may have also heard some buzz about is allulose. This is a naturally occurring sugar that's low in calories. It's about 10% that of table sugar and it is sweeter than table sugar as well. It is commercially produced and found in small amounts in things such as figs and raisins. This again does not increase blood glucose levels. And while it is still relatively new and not used as widely as the sugars we've discussed so far, um, it is gaining some popularity. Again, due to the rise in a lot of individuals following the keto diet and looking for products to meet the needs to help limit the carbohydrates when they're following that pattern. Similarly to others, it can be found as a sweetener on its own, as well as in different products such as sugar-free cookies, bars, and candies. Okay, so now that we've reviewed the types of sugar substitutes, where do they most often pop up? I've thrown a few products out there as I went through today, but you'll see it in everything from diet sodas to lemonades and iced teas, candies, diet ice cream, no sugar sauces like barbecue sauce, uh, protein bars, those marketed for the keto diet, low to no sugar yogurts, um, no sugar added canned fruits, and more. Regardless of which sugar alternative you may choose, it is generally recommended to still limit these more processed foods in moderation. So just like I would for the sugar containing versions of most of these products shown here. Now, aside from seeing sugar free on the front of packages, now that you may know a little bit more about these alternative sweeteners, you might wanna be, be able to identify which ones are in the different foods. So this is where you wanna be sure to check that ingredients list. I have a few examples here highlighting the alternatives. And again, as you saw with our monk fruit and stevia, oftentimes they are maybe more than one in a product. So always check that ingredients list. Um, if you also know that sugar alcohols just don't quite work for you, you have that gas or bloating that comes, just know that ingredients are listed in order of rank of how much 
they make up a product. So if you're looking to limit things like sugar alcohols, maybe need to pick up a product that doesn't completely exclude them, look for one that has them a little bit further down on the list. Before wrapping up, I do want to change gears just a bit and talk about real sugar. Um, in addition to sugar alcohols and non-nutritive sweeteners, there can be confusion around what counts as added sugars and products, so those that we're trying to limit. Uh, and since it is important to limit those each day, I just wanted to take a moment to highlight a few tips as we wrap up. I will launch a polling question your way just to get a pulse for where we are. So which of these ingredients is considered added sugar when added to or found in products? Honey, high fructose corn syrup, maple syrup, or all of the above? Three more seconds. Okay, great. Share that out. A little bit of a mix, but it is actually all of the above. And it can be a little bit confusing, but we do have a few uh, tips and tools that make it a little bit easier these days to identify added sugars. Sugar can be hidden in the ingredients list under a variety of different names. Even things like molasses, or coconut sugar. Uh, when in doubt, you can also reference the added sugars line on the nutrition facts label. This is relatively new and helps us just quickly to distinguish between the added sugars that we're trying to limit and total sugars that are found in the product. While many of these names you see here are perceived to be more natural and nutritious than table sugar, they really aren't necessarily any healthier and should still be used in moderation. So again, just one easy way to keep those eye on added sugars, uh, whether it is limiting them from the nutrition facts label or incorporating any sugar substitutes. Just a few key takeaways as we wrap up. When it comes to sugar alternatives, they can help limit how much added sugar you eat each day. And if you are managing blood sugars or keeping an eye on how many carbohydrates you have, they may help with your daily intake. It is important to determine if they're a fit for you and your health goals. Keeping in mind things like sugar alcohols can cause some GI distress. Now, in addition to potentially causing some distress there, sugar alcohols and are found increasingly in processed low carbohydrate products that typically don't provide additional nutrients that we're trying to bump up to our plates. Research is still ongoing on several of these sweeteners, so always be sure to dig a little bit deeper than what you might see in the headlines. Um, if you are using any sugar alternatives, keep in mind that, that high intensity sweetness of them, so you may not need as much uh, in your coffee or when you're sweetening products. And do keep in mind that each one has some different properties when it comes to cooking and baking, so be sure to check the manufacturer's website for additional guidance. And just the overall takeaway I'd leave you with is since these products are intended to replace sugar, as we saw, most often you'll see them in things like our sugar-free or diet sodas, cakes, cookies, and other desserts. Uh, relying on sugar-free options is not a substitute for focusing on that overall balanced eating pattern that we strive for, filled with whole foods, our fruits, vegetables, whole grains, lean proteins that can support overall health. Now, while today is our last of our spring series of setting the trend straight, we are starting a new cooking demo series next week on Tuesday at noon. If you're interested in signing up or learning more about our other spring and summer classes, please feel free to check out our website. I will send out a class recap email uh, by the end of the week and be sure to include the link as well if you're interested in learning more. All right, so for now, I'd like to take any questions you may have. I think I saw a few pop up as I went, so let me just answer those now as well, and feel free to type any others you might have in there.